Hey everybody, welcome back to the Neverboard Gaming Community. I'm Alex Brangen here with Sako. We're going to be covering some more action from our standard showdown event between Anthony Marino piloting his blue black mid range deck against Brandon Barrett piloting New Perspectives. The New Perspectives deck is a very interesting deck, I feel. It's one where it tries to set up New Perspectives, obviously, get some free cycles on, float some mana, either win with a Walking Ballista or a Approach of the Second Sun. That's a crazy combo deck. It pretty much feels like you're playing Storm in Standard when it goes off against you. They just sit there cycling through their entire deck. It's got some ramp options too. I think I see a uh, Gift of Paradise. Right. Yeah, it needs, it needs like a million mana to do anything, really. Uh, this is going to be a really tough matchup here because Marino's deck is going to be packing a lot of counterplay right off the, even in the main board. There's that first Gift of Paradise. Gonna go Enchantress Force, gain a couple of life points, three life points. But there's Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin cannot target that forest. I don't know why he thinks it can target a forest. It can't. Well, that's that's the second time he's made that misplay with that card that we've seen. Yeah, very weird. We're well, just going to have to pretend that was a fast land. We've got really no choice here, folks. I'm sorry. Very Field strange. of Ruin should not be able to target non-basic uh, basic lands. It does not target basic lands. Yeah, could have took out the farmland there, but... Does it not... Does that land... Does that enchantment change it? No, something? it's still a basic. You should not be able to target it with Field of Ruin. People keep missing this about Field of Ruin. They think it works like Ghost Quarter. It does not. It only targets non-basic lands. We've confirmed this in a previous episode. Yeah, destroy target non-basic land and opponent control. So you can't even Field of Ruin your own lands. Only in opponent lands. Only opponent non-basic lands. So Luckily, no spreading season standard to have to really worry about killing your own lands. I mean... People think that that's how Field of Ruin works because it seems like it would be fair if it could target any land. Yeah, we're all used to Ghost Quarter, and this thing costs a lot of mana in comparison. And it kind of replaces Ghost Quarter in modern decks, so people think it works that way. Anyway, whatever the case, Marino's going to drop a Glint Sleeve Siphoner and then draw an extra card. Yeah, Brandon's getting robbed here because... He, oh, he Gonti comes out. Let's see yeah. what fun stuff he can pull off Brandon's deck. Oh. I think he might have the Counterspell, though. Oh, he's going to cycle oh. in response. I think that's Paradox Haze he just cycled. Haze of Pollen? Haze of Pollen, excuse me. Paradox Haze is a completely different card, not even standard legal. It is Haze of Pollen. Oh, he shows the camera. <laughs> he says, look what I got. Take his approach, dude. That'd be hilarious. Approach is one of the big win cons. I gotta be honest, I can't even remember if Walking Bullis is in the deck. It just seems like it should be. But yeah, I don't think Brandon's playing it. It's, that, it's an option, though, for sure. Approach to the Second Sun is its main win condition. And he has the ability to steal one here, but my guess is he'll play Actually, no, he'll no, I don't, I don't think he is playing it. I think his only other win con is Faith of the Devoted. What is that? Uh, that's an enchantment that says whenever you cycle a card, you can pay into it to drain their life. Oh, Drain cool. two life each time. Yeah, well, once if he pops off and we get to see how much that deck can cycle, that could literally kill you in one turn then. New Perspective is just a wild card, man. Gotta watch out for it. Hefty mana cost, though, so... It's six, and he, he should be able to cast it this turn. It's just that, I don't know, Marino has... Oh, man, he's got a gear hook in hand. Everybody from Neverboard, remember, if you're playing against Marino, remember to tell him to read Field of Ruin, because you cannot target basics with that. <laughs> he has made that mistake twice on camera now. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, all right. Field of Ruin is just too good. So another Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Cycle. I think that's... I don't know what the heck uh, is. Reward the Faithful or whatever it's called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, renewed faith, faith, excuse me. Renewed Faith. Is that just a gain life card? Yeah, it gains life whether you cast it or cycle it. It gains six, I think, if you hard cast it, and then two if you cycle it. But the cycle costs more, I think. Let me, let me double check. Renewed Faith. No, the hard cast costs more. The hard, right. It hard casts for three, and you gain six. Uh, it cycles for two, and you gain two. Nice. So the cycle is just strictly better most of the time. All right. Marino dumping a Vraska's Contempt and a Fatal Push out of his hand with a Champion of Wits. That's uh, pretty that's, good. You don't need those in this matchup. That's the FNM promo Fatal Push, too, where he's being pushed into a pile of gold coins. <laughs> it's like Not the so death bad. of Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't know dangerous. I didn't know Scrooge McDuck cost two mana. <laughs> He does seem like a low converted mana cost kind of grouch. Hard cast hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphic illumination. Just a draw to step. Still searching for that new perspective. It doesn't look like he found it. And even if he did, I have a hard time believing Marina's going to let it resolve. I think he found another gift of paradise, but that's going to be dangerous to cast into that super powerful field of ruin. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep hammering Marino on this point. I'm going to keep making fun of him for this. All right, there it is. Gift of Paradise, give himself another life cushion. Doing a whole lot of nothing right now. Cycling. Cycle, cycle Feta Pools. Both lands, both will players cycling. Just keep thinning your deck out. Drawing an extra card off that Winsleaf Siphoner. Not missing a single land drop this game so far. Pretty I don't good. think so, yeah. Marino's just trying to rocket through this game, just fast counting all this creature damage. Brings him down to eight. You gotta kill Brandon like twice when he's gaining so much life in these matches. I think he's. When I mean, you say that, but he's also paying life very slowly into that Glint Sleeve Scyther. It does feel like you have to kill him multiple times to actually kill him, though. All right. Just because of all of the different answers he could be hiding behind. There's a walking ballista for two. <laughs> Enough mana to pump it again. Brandon again. Brandon again. again, hard casting hieroglyph elimination. Scary thing is, though, if the new perspectives comes out, he could just win on this turn. I think he just thought they'd get cast out. I'm going to have to start thinking about actually casting it and not just cycling it. He's got an approach to the second sun in his hand, but this seems like a dangerous time to cast it with Marino having four on tap mana. Pondering, pondering. Brandon seems though to be a fan of the control and combo decks. I always see him running something along these lines. The last deck he was using was a Grixis control build with uh, like Nicol Bolas and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, two copies of Nicol Bolas. He's just going to go ahead and cast this approach to the second sign, hope for the best. Marino might not actually have the counter here. I don't see the only blue card I see in his hand is a Torrential Gear Hulk, and he can't cast that right now. So this approach is going to resolve. Brand Brandon Barrett's going to go up to a 15 life. Burying the approach in the sands. To come back in a few turns. If he can live that long. Bumps Ballista up at the end step, putting him that much closer to death. I mean, Barrett can be grateful for one thing here. Marino does not have the Scarab God like he usually does at this point in the game. Hey, don't hold your breath, man. Top deck's... Yeah, he has been known to top deck just pure gas. We'll see what happens. He is drawing an extra card here. Oh, and he finds that field of ruin. Let's see if he kills another forest. <laughs> if he kills that enchanted forest again, we're just going to have to keep pointing out once again, folks, field of ruin cannot target basic lands. That was a misplay. Still want to know what's hiding under Gonti. I did not see what he chose earlier. Yeah, I was looking at you when he was choosing for Gonti, so I didn't catch what he hit under it. Maybe he's going to cast it right now. He was very discreet after he flashed all the four of the cards to the camera. He's counting up his combat damage here. Doesn't have enough to kill Brandon just yet. He can bump the Ballista up, I think, to five, though. Five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Oh, yeah, and the Walking and Ballista would finish him off, yeah. So that's enough damage. The Ballista will have to finish him off with, you know, the arrows, and then... Going machine down. Gun Ballista... Uh, such a wonderful card, that walking ballista. So powerful. Yeah. Such an amazing card. I think Brandon just kind of miscounted there and thought he could live, but he underestimated the power of the walking ballista. Remember, if it's a game-ending play, walking ballista has basically faux double strike. Oh, yeah, dude. Ballista just freaking suicide bombs his way in, just blows himself up into a pile of scrap. That's not the flavor. He's a ballista. <laughs> <laughs> he just runs out of arrows and says, I quit. <laughs> He, might, he has to fall apart <laughs> dramatically, like uh, Forrest Gump's uh, leg braces. Uh, yeah, that that would be <laughs> that would be funny to watch. I'm out of arrows. <laughs> I have no purpose. <laughs> what is my purpose? No arrows. Critical existence failure is what they call that in <laughs> RPG parlance. <laughs> 
I don't know what the heck New Perspectives is even going to sideboard to save himself here. Yeah, I didn't quite catch what Brandon was reaching for his sideboard, but Marino didn't even blink when he threw in all those lost legacies. Oh, yeah. More negates, too, if he, if he doesn't already run for it. I see he's already boarding out Essence Scatters. Yeah, ain't a single creature in there. Anticipating, perhaps correctly, that Brandon Barrett isn't running any creatures, or if he is, it's not enough to justify all that removal. Here he is showing the camera what he's taking out. Looks like a combination of Fatal Push, Frasca's Contempt, and Essence Scatter. He's bringing in more Negates, Lost Legacies. Can't see what else is there, but there's definitely the Negates, Lost Legacies. Oh, and an extra Commit to Memory as well. Hmm. Wonder why I use that. Is that a permanent? Is that any permanent with Commit? Yeah, with, uh, I think it's any non-land permanent, actually. Oh, okay. And I believe it also works on spells, not just non-land permanents. Yeah, I remember. It's one of the ways you can get around Carnage Tyrant, or at least delay them a little bit. You yeah, can... it says put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. So yes, that is one of the ways you can quote-unquote counter a Carnage Tyrant. Yeah, that's something that kind of blew my mind as a newer player to the game. I didn't realize that Hexproof doesn't count until the creature's on the battlefield. That is exactly true. So you can, like, Carnage Tyrant can't be countered, but it can totally be committed because that's not a counter. And I guess a, a, a spell is, doesn't gain its abilities until it's on the battlefield. In most cases, yes. It depends on what the abilities are. They are changing the templating for Dominaria uh, as far as uh, the style guide and like things that appear in the text box are concerned to make it a bit less ambiguous as to which abilities work on the stack and which ones work only on the battlefield. I see. Like, you'll see cards get printed that get cheaper if you control a wizard. That's one of the things that they're going to be doing in the upcoming set is sort of a wizard tribal theme. Oh, yeah. I love the idea that just giving them lightning bolts and counter spells for the wizards. So what you're going to see on these spells is... Well, they won't say the name of the spell. They'll say, this spell costs some amount of mana less to cast if you control a wizard. Which is much less confusing, because people try to get away with some weird shenanigans. Yeah. There's, I, a, there's other templating changes coming to Dominaria. There's a lot of this cool stuff coming. Yeah, one, that, one that was confusing with me that this this adding that word to the card will uh, kind of remedy is Bomac Courier. Bomac Courier, like it says, you know, you know, get back all the cards exiled with Bomac Courier, mm -hmm. and that can be a little vague and ambiguous. It doesn't say this Bomac Courier because I don't think like another second copy can grab the cards exiled with the other one, correct? No, it, that, that's yeah. correct. It's only with the Bomac Courier underneath it, and that's actually something that's inherent in the rules. Whenever a card references itself by name, it's only ever referencing that specific card. That, not yeah. any other copies of that card. And another copy would be a whole new object in the game rules eyes. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different object. Same goes if you were to blink that Bomac Courier too, right? Yes, uh, the old Bomac Courier would cease to exist as far as the game state sees it, and then the new one would just be a brand new card. Even though it's literally the same card, it's counted as a brand new object. Nice. I guess it would have been better to uh, call out Gonti on that one. But, since that was a little more relevant to this matchup, but his ability is even more different than Bomac's. Yeah, Gonti's a little weird because you can play that card as long as it remains exiled, and that's inherent to his ETB trigger. So as long as his ETB trigger resolves and you get a card exiled with him, it doesn't matter if he leaves the battlefield or not. So you can use the same Gonti. You can blink a Gonti and get two cards with him and be able to play both. That's awesome. And even if he dies, gets exiled, somebody walks by and steals him out of your discard pile, doesn't you can matter. Still you can play. still play it. <laughs> the whole game for the rest of the game as long as it's in exile oh I think Brandon had to go for a mulligan here or just a little slow to I the think, draw I think, I think he is going for a mulligan oh yes Marino with a, with a product placement oh that's what we need little does he know we logo-ified this the nice, the nice plug for Neverboard Gaming I <laughs> uh, love that guy definitely one of our, uh, our uh, top players here at the store we love seeing him on camera he's on camera a lot about half the matches we've uploaded to YouTube so far he's in them kid gets wins man what can you say He's ahead 1-0 here on top of Brandon Barrett. Brandon neglecting to keep his hands, scrying, taking a while to think about it. Think he's going to leave it there, maybe? Yep, he's going to leave it there, right on top. Reaching for his lands, first turn fetid pools. Marino answers right back with his own fetid pools. <laughs> I think he has a shiny, though. Oh, pretty. All right. So, new perspectives... It really much is just digging for new perspectives. There's no other game plan besides get new perspectives into your hand somehow, some way. Is that Canyon Slew? Is he playing red cards in there? What red cards could he be playing in there? Maybe Sweltering Suns? I don't know. That is kind of weird. 
I don't remember this deck. I know it's a four color deck. I don't remember it playing any red cards though. Hmm. The main black card it plays is Shadow of the Grave, which I see in his hand right now. It also has Faith of the Devoted, like I said. Interdesting. And what is this that Marino just played on turn three for two mana? I have no idea what that is. We're going to have to do a little is research. Is it Argyll's Bloodfast? Oh, yes, it is Argyll's Bloodfast. Ah, that's actually great for a grindy matchup such as this. Yeah, ex yeah exactly. You can pay mana and... Pay life, draw cards, you know, get ahead that way. I knew it was an enchantment, I just didn't know what enchantment it was, but yeah, that is, in fact, Argyll's Bloodfast. Oh my gosh, between Glint Sleeve and the Bloodfast together, he's going to be drawing through a lot of his deck. Brandon looking for a line of play here. Going to cycle Hieroglyph Illumination. Is he, he going to miss a land drop this turn? He's shaking his hand going, uh... Rock roll raggy. Draw two cards off of that Argel's blood fast. Argel's going to get very, very hungry. And another extra card off of Clint Sleeve Cypher. Goodness gracious. Card advantage dot deck. <laughs> 50 11 cards in his hand right there. He literally cannot hold all this value. There's a Lost Legacy. Brandon has a response. He might decide to cycle or something. Unless he's got a negate. Nope. He's just going to show him. That you call at the time of casting that card, correct? That's not yeah, yeah. At the time, not the time of casting, but at the time of resolving. Oh, okay. You don't have to name anything until it resolves. I believe he called approach of the second son because he's. <laughs> he throwing. throws it across the table. At it's him. like, yeah, I, oh I do not God. care for this card. Please remove it from my face. Wait, there's only one in the deck. Is there only one? Yeah, he's looking through it and not finding any other copies. It's just the one, because there's none in Brandon's hand. Well, I guess if you get new perspectives, you basically have the ability to draw through your entire deck to find it. I think that's Faith Devoted in Faith of Devoted in Brandon's hand already. I could have sworn that was a... Sh oh, he does have Shadow of the Grave. I see it as well. So he does have Faith of Devoted. So he's got a win condition. He might have to just go ahead and run it out, hoping Marino isn't holding in a gate. Charter Course comes down in main phase two. Man, that's such a good card. Look at how much advantage he's able to bolster with this He's, he's going to have to pick and choose what to keep in his hands. Discard down to seven. He's still got Essence Scatters in there, just in case. Just in case Brandon decides to whip out a Regal Caracol or something. I don't know if he's got that in this deck, though. I did I did speculate maybe Walking Ballista was in there. Maybe Essence Scatters is necessary. Uh, that is possible, back. yeah. Well, he got a good look at the whole deck, even better than we did right here. So Marino sure as heck knows what the threats are. He's just going to go ahead and crack this Field of Ruin? Oh, wait, no, he didn't have the Field of Ruin in play yet. He's just showing it off. Josh, where is Brandon's mana? He needs mana to, to survive. He's just going to die very, very quickly here. And that's Duress. No green sources for those sad-looking Gift of Paradise right now. <laughs> Brandon making some very animated hand motions going, I can't find what I need to cast these things. <laughs> Yuck. That's always a bad feeling. It's it's like both players can't hold their value, but in two completely different ways. Shadow of the Grave going to hit the yard. Good idea. And then, is that Gaunty again? Yes. Gaunt. Let's see what else he can steal. <laughs> More card advantage. Man, I love this. Did he find Faith of the Devoted? He stole his Faith of the Devoted? I, I thought I saw another copy of that card in Brandon's hand already, though. Finally, he finds the forest, so he can cast Gift of Paradise now if he wants. But he's going to have a little too late, maybe. Yeah, way too late. He's already at 12 life, staring in the staring down the barrel of a lot of cards in Marino's hand, and he just keeps drawing and drawing and drawing. Argyll's Bloodfast can be activated again here. Or was that Glitzley? That was just now? Okay. Argyll's, you got to pay two, right? Yeah, you got to pay two and two life. He had the mana to do it at the end step, I don't know. Maybe he just didn't feel like he needed it. There's the Scarab God. Digging himself deeper and deeper into Brandon's grave. Gonna nicely invite him down in. I think he just cycled Sheffit Monitor here to get himself some more lands. That's Sheffit Monitor. That's land cycling? Uh, whenever you cycle it, you get a basic land in the play. That's very cool. But it's, it's a very expensive cycling cost. Very, very good card in Amaket Draft as well. well. I never had the joy of doing that draft. Who Just whoever gets a... Uh... It's, it's one of my favorite draft formats ever. Oh, really? Yeah. What are some of the bombs in that? 
Pick. Take your pick. <laughs> uh, cards like Oncrop Crasher, uh, e even that uh, River Serpent is really, really good if you draft like a spell based deck. Oh, yeah. Even, even the mono blue decks are very good. Alright, he enchants a land there. Usually I try to go for, like, if I could force it, I would. That red white kill you out of nowhere aggro deck. It just do like 16, 18 damage in one turn. There's another gift of paradise. It's way too late, though. I think. We don't quite have enough damage yet. Here he is. Our yeah, that's Gargoyle the thing, though. If you, if you don't have the counter spell to stop the new perspectives, as soon as that card hits the board, it can be game over. Literally at that moment. Does Marino have eight mana? No, he has seven. One more, and he'll be able to do Scare God twice. There's that other field of ruin. Ooh, bad news. Maybe he should have enchanted a basic land with. <laughs> he he did. He has one on a plains. The others on the fetid pools. The fetid pools he can legally destroy with a field of ruin. The plains he cannot. That doesn't stop him. But hasn't I, stopped him before. It was kind of funny. I actually saw uh, Brandon playing another match with this uh, deck, and somebody thought they had the game on him because as soon as he cast uh, uh, new perspectives, they go cast out. And he goes, while cast out's on the stack, cycle through the whole thing and, and beat you. Cycle through the whole thing, yeah. generate mana. Because <laughs> that whole combo can play at instant speed. All you need to do is generate the mana and be like, okay, cast out resolves. Approach to the second sun, another approach to the yeah, second sun. exactly. It's pretty funny. But he only has the one approach to the second sun, so... Hmm. I think that may be a sideboard tactic. I, I think it probably is a sideboard tactic. Brandon's a pretty clever. I think he knows Marino has those lost legacies. Okay, so this this is a completely illegal use of Field of Ruin. This is fine. Blowing up the Fetid Pools is fine there. It's the planes that he shouldn't be able to, but he's probably going to try and play. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Read the cards, guys. Read the cards. RTFC. <sighs> there are actually sleeves that say that. <laughs> Goodness. I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make, but if he does get his uh, new perspectives out, then it will be pretty sad to see. It. Well, we got some new uh, rulings to get our players schooled up on. Field of Ruin can only target non-basic lands. And even then, not your own non-basic lands, just your opponents. Such a great card, though. And fun fact, in Commander, even though you only target one player's non-basic land, every player searches their library for a basic. Oh. So if you, if you ever set off a Field of Ruin in a Commander game, everybody gets in on the Mana Ramp action. Even players who were not involved in the decision to crack Field of Ruin or were victimized by it. I guess that's not quite a hug, but it's like a pat on the back. Yeah. Uh, it's like, Brandon allow me to get rid of this maze of it for everybody. All right, everybody gets a land as well. We love you. We're not going to attack <laughs> you for a while. You know, commander politics. Oh, man. Marino's got death on board here. All he's got to do is swing. There's another field of ruin. Gee, I wonder if it's going to blow up a forest. And he's going to go and cast that Faith of the Devoted. Just to show off. Oh, my gosh. Why? He just... <laughs> Cycle Fetid Pools? That'd be hype. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, do it. We know you're playing him. He's got Walking Ballista in his hand as well, so we can show off that way, too. And here it comes. For three. And he's only going to swing in with a... He's going to leave him at one, just to taunt him. Oh, come on, Marino. Come on, Marino. Don't, don't play with your food, man. So there isn't... You've already illegally blown up several of his lands. The funny thing is, though, if he were to new perspectives, he could win while Ballistas was still... Oh, no, he couldn't win while I was on the stack, because he has to cast the Sorcery of Approach, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, even then, Approach has been taken out. It's been Lost Legacy out, so... Oh, yeah, you're right. So I, I thought I saw the Faith of Devoted in his hand he earlier stole in the game. The <laughs> he has no win does he, does, Doesn't he have another one in his hand, though, or was that some other card? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't think you can win with that card without new perspectives anyway, though. I mean, I've made wrong guesses about what's in people's hands, uh, depending on, like, the angle of the art that I can see before, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe that wasn't what the card was. Why wouldn't he call new perspectives with the Lost Legacy? It's kind of funny to me, but... Because that's not the win con. At least that's not the main win con. Yeah. And 
Severino's just going to sit here and do nothing and just... Mastermind's acquisition. What are you going to get with that? Oh, no. Reaching for his sideboard. He's going to go with his sideboard. Whatever he's got, it's not in his... Oh, you know what? I bet that's where the other approaches are hiding. Yeah. But is he going to get it? It's too little too late, as we said before. I mean... I bet, that's, I bet that's why he only has the one now. It's because he can get the the other with Mastermind. That's pretty funny. That's a clever way of getting around uh, of, of Lost Legacy. Legacy. Yeah. That's really clever. I like it. Of course, he doesn't have to show us what he got, because you can get literally anything from your sideboard. That's such a wacky card. Is that the only wish you don't have to show your opponent? No, it's not the only one. Uh, like, any of the black ones that say get any card, you don't have to show it off. Oh, nice. Because, you know, there's no way to cheat with it. You can get literally any card. What are you doing, Marino? <laughs> He's just playing with his food. He pinged his own guy? He pinged his own Glinsleeve Siphoner so he could bring it back with Scarab God. <laughs> and he's going to lose life with Argyle's Bloodfast so we can transform it. A real nail-biter, guys. Down to the wire. <laughs> here it comes. Temple of Aklazots. Going to be praying to the Bat God here and start sacking his creatures for life. <laughs> I've never seen that card transform. Oh my goodness. It, normally, you're not supposed to transform it. The only... <laughs> The only reason you should is if you're almost going to die. Oh my but he's... gosh, the Scarab God loops here. Yeah, because that's going to come back on his end step. This is actually kind of funny. He's styling on him right now. Yeah, that's all this is. We have to wait for the global timer in the game to reach a certain point, so we're just going <laughs> to show off some tricks here. Oh, look, it's the Pedro spot. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ballista has apparently got a jam <laughs> in his firing mechanism. Cycling sensor. Yeah, Ballista's got a jam, and Gonti just doesn't feel like attacking today. Just gonna sit on their throne. Ooh, he's got There's new perspectives. Uh oh. This is right. <laughs> is he in response to the. No, he's gonna let it resolve. Draw trigger. <laughs> you can cycle for free all you want. Uh. Oh, but he could gain life. He has to be careful. If he's got renewed faith, he could gain life. But I think some that's... of the cycling. Oh yeah, that's probably the only one. Did he? Did he run out? Okay. Does he have a way to pull? The... Oh, he's got shadow of the grave. Okay. There's there's renewed faith. In... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> he's like no, Marino. No, no. Marino suddenly realizing maybe maybe styling on this guy isn't smart. Maybe I should just go ahead and kill him. <laughs> he's like, oh, you're about to gain some life. Hold up. Or is he just gonna load up one more arrow and let Brandon keep going? of finger pointing pings him for one response to the activation of walking ballista cycle vizier of tumbling sands in response ping again in response cycle vizier in response ping again in response cycle a third vizier <laughs> what is happening man does Anthony Marino have something to cycle to Faith is Devoted here to try and win? That'd be great. He throwed the ballista shot, <laughs> his, like I said, through his... The own disrespect. Own the utter disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Marino's like, look, man, I could have killed you seven turns ago. You're not about to come back right now. We're not letting that happen. Right. He so, almost got away with that ballista for free, though, so... so suddenly realizing it overextended, but just happened to have just enough counters on that ballista oh, to that's so thwart funny. He almost got the renewed faith. Almost got put in his place for style in there, but <laughs> sadly, or I guess happily, Marino <laughs> takes it 2 0. <laughs> sadly or happily, depending on your perspective, yeah. your new perspective. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was a pretty wacky one. I hope you can enjoy it with a nice sense of humor. Uh, we're going to get on to some more matches and get them uploaded for you quick. So make sure you check us out on Neverboard Gaming Community on Facebook. Like, subscribe, do all that jazz. So have a great night, guys. Peace out, everybody.